Welcome back to Vibe Check, episode two. We're joined once again by me, uh, the current off DM and your spectacled dungeon master, Drew. And we're also joined by our guests for uh, this evening. Please introduce yourselves and your characters and anything else that you guys feel. Maybe your socials. Do anything. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Caleb. I play uh, the beloved character for Ray Four with Fourth Wind. <laughs> uh, everybody's favorite. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, my name's Chase, and I play Seven. And I'm Chelsea, and I play Stewie. So I wanted to start this episode off the same way I did the last one. How are you guys doing? It's Friday currently. It's a great end of the week. Or how are you guys doing, just generally speaking? Doing good. I'm ready to sleep. <laughs> yeah, definitely hibernation mode coming up. <laughs> yeah. Well, not until after this. Yeah. Oh, of course not. I'm having a ton of fun. Great time. Fantastic. Happy to be here. I'm so happy. Um, we're going to ask you guys some questions about the campaign, and we're covering all the way up to episode five at this point, so covering the Christmas one-shot, and then all of Spaceport currently, and uh, nothing anything after, which it would be crazy if I could ask you questions about the finale of it, <laughs> which I might do. Um, first question. I want to pull from Twitter. Uh, you can find us at SkillCheckDM. Uh, we have Edge Flaherty one who asks, are all these people on Charlie's team? Are they other YouTubers? Who are they? I'm paraphrasing lightly, but I kind of wanted to ask you as well, also for my own interest, what you guys do here, like what your role is, and just give maybe some more background that people might appreciate and might uh, shed some light and give context to your characters and your actions and stuff like that. Caleb, start last time. Chelsea, you can go first. Oh my god. Okay, so I am the head of production and producer here. I've been working with Charlie for the last three, I guess almost four years now, which is kind of, no, just three, three years. Mm -hmm. um, We've been having a ton of fun. I am very nervous in front of a camera, so I <laughs> like to stay behind it. This is so much fun for me right the now. Whole, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, but, look, I'm in the same page. But yeah, I'm, I'm having a great time. Um, this is my first time playing Dungeons & Dragons, so I really have no idea what I'm doing. Um, but I'm kind of considering my character kind of like Smokey the Bear type of character mm -hmm. for the forest. So, but maybe with a tinge of a drinking problem. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's that's who Stewie is. Definitely fun. <laughs> Definitely fun. Chase, what's up? Uh, I am one of the editors here. I've been editing for Charlie since I want to say probably right before the pandemic started. So about three or three or four years. Mm -hmm. And um, I edit with Aaron. Uh, and I, I guess for me, I, I do a lot of just sitting off to the side and kind of buried in a computer a lot of the time. So I think that seven indirectly was an extension of my more like antisocial mm -hmm. habits but yeah i like that um i'm head of logistics whatever that means um <laughs> <laughs> basically you got a title i got a title yeah, yeah for tag you tag, uh -huh. tax purposes but i basically do whatever needs to be done like booking flights for esports players uh whatever objects we need in videos um, and like literally it's like hey we need this last second within 30 seconds can you go pick that up from across the state I'm like yes sir we yeah. can do that you're the go-getter you're answering the email yeah. you're setting up appointments the most like I'm, I'm stressed because I'm like booking an Airbnb for Toronto I'm like I need I need fiber internet do you have fiber internet They're like we don't know <laughs> like, tell me <laughs> tell me now um, I, I met Charlie uh, back in college and we used to go out like all the time and then I just started like started like you know hanging out with him more and more until he eventually hired me. No, oh, fantastic. Yeah. That's a perfect. I was, I was in his walls. I was like, I need, I need come on, please <laughs> get me out of here. He was already like, hey, can you help me like yeah. get some water? And you were like, sure. And then he was like, actually, I'll pay you a bunch of money to do this. <laughs> well, funny story. He was my, one of my clients at a gym. I was a trainer mm -hmm. and I heard his voice. and was like, you sound like that guy. Uh, Penguins Z10. Uh -huh. <laughs> I even messed up the name. He's yeah, like, yeah, he yeah. looks at me like all strange. And I was like, are you that guy? And he just like, he gave me that look, that classic Charles look. Uh -huh. Uh, but I've been playing D&D with this guy over here, mm -hmm. Rye Bread, which is yep. what I call him for funsies. Ryan, um, our, our vested DM. Vested DM. Uh, he was, we did that campaign for like, what, three years? Technically still ongoing. Technically still ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, had, had, had a fun ton, a, a ton of fun. Wow. And a yeah. fun a ton. Yeah, fun mm -hmm. a ton. Exactly. 
fantastic you guys ace it we're done <laughs> show over yeah perfect no i'm gonna keep you guys locked here for a little bit longer so i'm gonna i think i'm gonna start by getting going for really wide questions and then kind of narrowing down and i'm gonna start with what are you guys thinking of spaceport so far how do you guys think your characters are compared to sort of how you imagined them when you started playing or when we were like concepting everything like how has it all kind of worked out in these first five episodes Kill yeah, him off. Feel free to kill him off. <laughs> Please just kill Frey off, man. It's so rough. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I kind of like thought about it. Uh, Frey forthwith, his name literally translates to getting into fights quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I like to stir things up, but I didn't really consider how that might affect my my teammates. Mm -hmm. um, love him, L like my character overall, um, but just think that maybe he's a little rough around the edges, which you know mm -hmm. might be an analog for somebody else I know. It's me. It's me. It's me. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I think an important thing, especially with new D&D players, even though you're not a new one, but something that everyone experiences when they play d and is that they have this idea for the character, and then it kind of works itself out as you play. Um, would you guys say that you have the same experience, and how are you liking Spaceport? Yeah, I, I, I'm enjoying Spaceport a lot. I think that it's it's really hard to get a nice mix of sci-fi and fantasy elements, and I think that you guys have knocked that out of the park. Mm -hmm. um, and as for my character, I think that... I, I wanted to start it as much more of like a tragic character, and mm -hmm. then I think I looked around and saw Gummy Bear Hippo Man, and I was yeah. like, okay, maybe I should approach this from a more comedic <laughs> angle, because <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to be like the dep the like sad one always. Like, We'll get to that episode like 45. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, the, the arc's coming. Don't worry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. That soup, bro. That shit hurt. <laughs> the soup? When, looking yeah. down at the soup? The soup. Yeah. Yep. Chelsea, <laughs> how about you? Um, I think kind of similar to Chase, where I, I wanted to maybe play a bit more serious character, but we don't do anything seriously around here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And it's also, like I said, it's my first time playing, so it's just kind of learning what the hell does a bard actually do? And mm -hmm. I know I'm not doing the best job at it, <laughs> but, you know, I'll, I'll get better at use, uh, giving out bardic inspiration. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all a work in progress. You know, everything's good. Caleb. I have a question for you from God. General Space. Oh, no. Uh, people have noted that sometimes you give Ryan knowing looks or you seem to know what he's planning. Do you care to elaborate? You just talked about how you were playing in his games, but anything specific to spring to mind or stuff like that? Well, the thing you got to understand about Ryan is he's a fucker. Big time. <laughs> uh, you never trust a single thing that he does. Everything that he does has some sort of like secondary or tertiary uh, reasoning behind it. Mm -hmm. I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. Okay. So that's why I look at him. I'm just like, what are you planning, you sick son of a bitch? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna note this down. For yes, please when I'm do. Talking with him and well, planning for DM stuff. It, it, that's just you know part of the dynamic. It's like this lady over here is having a rough time with this treasure chest. You're like, hmm. You go to help it. It's like a mimic, and you're dead. Next thing you know, your character's dead. It's like it's all over. So I just don't trust a, thing, a single thing that he says. <laughs> Fantastic. I do. I do notice for a lot of the RP sections, Ryan is very good at like. You'll you'll throw some role playing at him, and he'll be like, "Okay, no, back at you." Actually, now you have to role play even harder. Now, yes. <laughs> it's yes, a lot yes. of like tossing it back. It puts it keeps you on your feet, but it's 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 very entertaining. It's mm -hmm. very fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, another Twitter question: We have It Rixian, who says, "Should I make animatics?" Which yes. the answer yes. is yes. <laughs> but I wanted to extrapolate that to uh, what moments in the campaign so far that spring to your minds. Would you want to see animated or an animatic form like as soon as possible? Basically, any of Hemp Pumpo's yeah. one liners. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Aaron is so good at the one liners. I don't know what goes on. I mean, he's always like that just in general, mm -hmm. too, but any of those would be fucking hilarious animated. Oh, yeah. Any of the hey, you got a minute moments, yes. I think yeah. for, oh, sure. for so sure. For sure. So 100%. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say literally like any moment where seven hemp or he were talking I did all of that it's it's yeah. all so good it's all so good they they just create gold and it's it's hard to know how they it how might they be actually it. a big ask but because he talks so much but Valar does have a, a bunch <laughs> that's there true. As well. so many good moments <laughs> yeah. it's awesome how Danny as a player of Valar only plays by narrating what he's doing. So every image in my head of Valar, he's acting and doing something. Whereas Hep, he's always saying something super funny, <laughs> which is like super cool how yeah. different they are. And they're both so funny and great. And great and great and great. Um, after episode four, I think, no, I think episode three, and then playing in my Christmas one shot, and then going back to four, how do you guys feel about that kind of rapid DM swap? Or how, like, 
How do you guys feel generally moving forward, switching between the two of us, and specifically in that scenario? I feel like it's a tag team cage match, basically. I'm getting lambasted by trying to <laughs> understand what you know you guys are planning back and forth, mm -hmm. and I love it. Quite fantastic. <laughs> I think it's I think it's good to have two different uh, approaches to storytelling and to characters and things like that. It gives you it gives the players a better chance to approach their characters from different directions mm -hmm. and maybe learn things about them that they didn't know before. So. Mm -hmm. I think that it definitely fits with our crew as well, just being able to rapidly go to those different places. Mm -hmm. um, we're a ragtag group, and I think that that just kind of is a lot of fun for us too. <laughs> just picking up and putting down some yeah. Is there anything like differences in our DM styles that you guys like picked up on, or anything that like even just a vibe that you got off of us that feels different that is notable to you guys? This is my opportunity to learn about myself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is the vibe check. I'm, I thought I'm your voices myself. during the Christmas episode were just fantastic. Like, I you can voices. do character voices so, so well. Um, you can't do Ryan. <laughs> 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 but that was just a lot of fun hearing, like, the snarling monster and stuff. So if you haven't gone and watched the Christmas episode, go and watch it now. Yes. I loved making it, and the voices are so fun. I just, I, I agreed with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my... Pr like the, I, I kind of think about it like with me and my my friend who used to be addicted to Minecraft. I would just build big buildings and I would add no interior, mm -hmm. basically. And I and I told this to Ryan, you know, from the beginning. I think it's like a macro and a micro thing. Like I have a world builder and I have somebody who's inside of each and every scenario building the scene. Mm -hmm. And you're a great scene builder and he's a great world builder. And yeah. the two of you make a great dynamic duo. And I cannot stress that enough. I cannot stress how much I am going to be leaning on Ryan for world building assistance <laughs> for all of my arcs because it's not that I'm not used to doing it but you're right in that my focus is way more scene oriented so I think about scenes and when I'm building a world I'm thinking about it in chunks of scenes so I definitely need to learn more from from Ryan over here and I wouldn't even say like need to learn I'm just saying you guys are uh, such a great like duo together I super agree yeah, I just think it's amazing trying to learn. Well. and Ryan also is like we're, we're both on the we're trying to take classes, guys. <laughs> like you don't, you don't realize. Um, you two, Caleb and Chelsea, recently sat next to each other for uh, for one of the episodes that I wasn't pre present for. I wanted to ask how that was, and also a very light a dalliance maybe into talking about the dynamic between not only Foray and Stewie, <laughs> but the dynamic between Caleb and Chelsea. And if you have anything to say about to that. They were punishing us. <laughs> yeah, that was one, a punishment. I like, I one time, like mid-session, our shoulders like touched. And my skin actually burned. It was, was kind of wild. No, Caleb's one of my really good buddies. Honestly, he's like a brother. I feel like oh, everybody no. here at work, it's like I get to work with all of my brothers, which is really fun. Um, we also are roommates. And so I think that that's all it is, is we... We know how to rally each other up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I I love Chelsea today. Like, I actually love Chelsea. I don't tell people I love them if I don't. Um, which is why I never told you, Chase. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I've only been here two years. I have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That you know, Chelsea and I got hired not around like the exact same time, but it was it was really close. We just kind of like learned. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. You're like, I know a lot of things. I was like, this is pretty weird. <laughs> so definitely, there was like some growing pains. I'm sure. Um, getting used to somebody who had literally, I was like a chicken with my head cut off. I was like, what what am I doing? What am I supposed to do? I don't know. And uh, uh, she was like work mom for a long time and now work sister and i really appreciate her <laughs> and as far as like in the game i think i think it's just because stewie heard that uh he was married to a dragon and there's still some lore for stewie you guys don't know we're still trying to build the character so i was gonna like, i was gonna give poke us into time it. give us time mm -hmm. but stewie doesn't like dragons because they're fire breathing creatures and like i said earlier i'm kind of a smoky the bear of the forest like don't burn everything down yeah so i'm mm -hmm. just always a little bit or stewie's a little bit uh, skeptical of dragons mm -hmm. and another thing is that when you play DD, a bit of yourself is in your character there's for no, sure yeah you can't get out of that so yeah. i think it's sick seeing <laughs> it's i know that the dynamic between you two is the most pronounced and everyone picks up on it and i i love it I love what episode you guys. was it that like one of the top comments was like, I like how Chelsea's pretty quiet for the most Literally. part. <laughs> <laughs> it never misses a chance to fuck with Caleb. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm always going to as well. It's fun. We share an office like literally just out of nowhere. Be like, fuck you, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> like a thousand percent all the time. Drive to the warehouse. Tell yeah. Chelsea to go fuck herself. Drive never, home. <laughs> never, never safe. Sends a postcard. Eat shit, Chelsea. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, at Raccooner2 on Twitter. 
says, what have your favorite parts of Dungeons & Dragons been so far? Roleplay, fights, uh, costumes, anything in particular that you guys have picked up and like really, really enjoyed so far? Definitely the combat for me. Yeah. I, I am terrible at dice and numbers, and so I was it was daunting at first, but as I've gotten in the, the swing of it, it's been a lot of fun. And some of the RP as well is fun. I just, you know, I'm not good put on the spot like that, but... It's, I think you have an audience that would disagree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're awesome at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the combat, for sure. Yeah, the combat. You, I think that Seven's interaction with combat is interesting because he's way more of like a controly type thing. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to go for a lot more like just CC mm -hmm. and heals and not really doing a lot of damage, but just giving advantage when I can yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, everyone yeah. else. And Goodberry. And Goodberry, of course. Yeah, yeah. When we did the, the one shot with the wolves, mm -hmm. right? I was like, we were going through like combat strategy, and it was like, you're gonna be the head strategist. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, we get, we're gonna like, you know, cover these crossbow bolts and silver. And then once we got into the real campaign, that all just fell apart because Matt was like, I have an axe. <laughs> Let me kill everything. And I was just like, okay, perfect. Um, that works too. That's fine. Um, I just really like combat. We used to be my favorite thing, and mm -hmm. it, it's I still like seeing how people like you know think strategically and getting inside of their head while they're doing that. But honestly, anytime another character like opens their mouth and I really see them getting into character, it's like I get this like twinkle in my eye. I'm just like when when Aaron killed those two people at the bar, I was like, oh my god. Yes. He's like, man, we just we just killed two people, man. What just happened? Yeah. I was like, oh my god, this is perfect. It's so good. <laughs> just seeing where they take it and, and seeing you know how they how they kind of roll with it is amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chelsea. Costumes. No, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, yeah. you fun. love getting into costume every single week. It's it takes a minute. I mean, mine's the longest just because that damn wig. But um, I honestly, I agree. I think combat's been a lot of fun. I don't necessarily know if I'm doing the correct <laughs> things. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, again, being the best bard, I'm gonna get better at it. I promise. But um, it's been so much fun, and like just the strategy. Um, the last one that we just did, which. I don't think we'll be up before this one. It's was probably one of the the more fun combat scenes that we've had. And, uh, mm -hmm. I think we all work together really well on that one too. For sure. Oh yeah. Anything? I know. I, was just okay. <laughs> I see you prepping and I'm trying to be like, oh, go for it. Um, going back to what we were just talking about, the three of you guys at the table are often the most costumed uh, there. Like Danny, I mean, Danny's costume is great, but he just puts on a jacket, and it's similar with Charlie, but he has those fucking sick goggles. Mm -hmm. um, how do you guys feel being, like, having to prep physically, like, longer than most people? Do you think it's helpful for getting into character or maybe distracting sometimes? I literally do my voice in the car. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I talk to myself, and I literally, like, will give myself prompts to respond to, because I find mm -hmm. myself just defaulting to, like, a stupid southern accent sometimes, and I'm like, that's not... You have to get back into it. Yeah, it's not like Nick Cage, Sean Connery, which is definitely what I default uh, to. Everywhere online, people are saying Nick Cage. Yeah. Yes. Not the bees. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, so I think being in costume really helps me kind of, like, like get back into character and then getting out of it helps me kind of like not not like I'm, a, I'm not like a method actor i'm not out like wrestling a bear for the revenant or whatever but yeah, yeah, yeah. you know I'm, I'm definitely trying my best mm -hmm. what about you guys um it i think it helps me i i did i did theater in high school and so i'm mm -hmm. kind of used to walking around in a dumbass costume <laughs> <laughs> waiting waiting to start True. and then sort of taking it off is like just decompressing you just it's like your way of saying okay i'm done i can you know i can rest yeah 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 um but i don't mind it i like my costume i think it's i like it so nice and same as chase i did theater all through high school and college so i'm used to walking around looking like a dumbass um and just in general i dress kind of funny but uh <laughs> also we're gonna have more pieces as the campaign goes along we are working with two amazing prop masters mm -hmm. um so they've been working on some really cool pieces for us uh, awesome. for the future episodes i know that i'm really excited and i get to see them early i don't even know how excited other people are to see them <laughs> it, it seems so sick um chelsea Specifically for you, what was going through your head before, during, and after the King of the Road's illness? Uh, freaking out, freaking out, freaking out. Yeah. I King of the Road has definitely been my like favorite character. Like NPC? That, yeah, NPC character that's been involved. Um, I think just because Stewie definitely, that's kind of like who she is with in her world most right. of the time. So I, when he was the one that got sick, <laughs> I was like, 
Ryan, I <laughs> <laughs> if you kill off my favorite NPC, I yeah, I'm gonna just walk away. I, I probably would have actually cried. So <laughs> don't do that for the views. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely <laughs> won't do that for the views. <laughs> but yeah, no, King of the Road is awesome. So I was, um, but it was also fun to having it be more high stakes because then you get more into character more into the game obviously mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah now that you guys have things that you care about we have so much more leverage yeah <laughs> dungeon mastering gets easier got us yeah exactly <laughs> fuck exactly you guys can answer as well about the king of the road your experience with him and his illness i refuse okay <laughs> for a praise on his downfall <laughs> and this is why i can't fuck with flora <laughs> um yeah I, I was definitely worried that that ryan was doing some sneaky shit and just put this great NPC in our game and then a couple games later just <laughs> <laughs> and Caleb then... is getting reaffirmed like crazy. <laughs> Caleb's getting flashbacks. Oh yeah. But then no just idea. taking that NPC away I was like this definitely seems like something that that they would do to just like throw us off you know uh, throw us off our feet and um but yeah I, I think he's a great NPC so I was happy to, <laughs> happy to happy to help him out. Fantastic. You'd actually have to be like <laughs> Mechanical to think I'd give you any ammo. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from my well, heart. You are correct. Yeah. We are maniacal. Yeah. And I will not Have go any further day. than that. Caleb. That was great. How was your day of silence in the game? <laughs> Refreshing. Yeah? Yeah. I knew that, you know, finally I could just, you know, do my... I totally never do this, but, you know, go onto the YouTube comments section for one time and have a nice... Nice safe stroll. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Good time. <laughs> a loving, uh, a reigning of happiness. Mm -hmm. upon 20, you. Uh, 24 hours of bliss. Oh, yeah. Yep. Perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because Valar already is mostly silent, like mm -hmm. all the time, and he does a lot of like third person narration type of play, which is funny because most groups either fall into like one or the other category, is my experience, is that everyone either is super into role play or everyone is kind of like, this is a game and we're going to go to third person. I'm wondering if any part of your time in silence was inspired by his like description of his own action or if you think that you've learned anything about Valar from spending a session in silence well I, you know I had just been bested by somebody in a, in a physical contest mm -hmm. um, a very massive you know celestial being um, who's not handsome but rugged you know yes. according to <laughs> his description and I, I just thought it would be a good thing for him to kind of reflect on that and that time of silence really like, I mean, he did reflect, obviously, but it was just kind of like, maybe you're not all that, mm -hmm. you know, actual, like, character development. Um, so I, I thought, you know, why not? And then I just kind of, like, got into more, like, physical, you know, role play. Like, mm -hmm. I, I was doing, like, the double guns and shooting and, like, oh, yeah. doing things that were impractical. And I learned I'm, like, the lowbrow comedy guy. You know, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. I can do that. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be, I'll be Foray the cable Look, guy. Everybody in the group is going to be yeah, there yeah, yeah. at some points in the show. Uh, how about you guys? Any opinion on his day of silence? I knew how to use Bardic Inspiration that day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you sure did. It was a great day. Anything? We all learned something. Yeah. I think it was a I think it was a good vocal cord rest for you. For yeah, sure. Well, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I must uh, I must congratulate you on your success of saying, I'm gonna go a whole in game twenty four hours without speaking yeah. and you well, fucking crushed well, it. Well the worst thing is like we all knew this would be good and then you decide to make me roll for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just in case right at the yeah, end. Of course. Yeah, That's yeah. the fun well, part. Make me roll for it. <laughs> Um, Chelsea, this is something we talked about before. Mm -hmm. Stewie has said that she isn't fond of dragons, mm -hmm. and we talked about fire breathing. Is, th is there any other, perhaps, alternative reasons that Stewie would not like dragons, and then backward reconned it into the lore why she wouldn't like them? Or you th are pretty settled that she generally never yeah. has? Yeah, I just think that she generally never has. And then, also, you know, we've got another, uh, significant other that was involved so maybe she's just kind of like that's probably why he acts that way he's married <laughs> to a dragon you know <laughs> um but yeah like in stewie's world some of the the lore is that there was a dragon that kind of set up a, a flames up in, uh part of the forest and uh, well yeah i mean it's easy to imagine like yeah. seeing that happen and stewie's just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so as, as a as a character, I want to inquire. Oh, sorry, as a player, I want to inquire. But as a character, I just can't show that I care. Yeah, you know. So it's not that I don't care. I yeah. want to inquire, but I can't do that. That'd be awkward. Yeah. Right. So and I, I think can't. too, like as the storyline progresses, like we'll be able to, you know, tell more of our backstory through playing and everything. So. And I think finding details like that that before the game, like let's think 
three months ago when we were planning everything. Mm -hmm. Were you already thinking about, you know, Stewie doesn't like dragons at that point? Ka kind of, just because I was also wow. trying to figure out like, like I said, newbie here, uh, like what characters are going to be in this world. And um, yeah, I just thought, you know, there's probably, and there's a couple other creatures too, I think that she's just a little bit like standoffish towards. Mm. It's, and she's just kind of, she lives under a rock. So she's just a little bit, you know, like. She needs to be brought up to speed. Yeah, or needs yeah. to know that not all dragons are going to destroy an entire forest in Exactly, front of you. yeah. Yeah. I think finding details like that through the campaign is one of the many ple pleasures of Dungeons and Dragons. So I'm excited for all of you guys specifically and not any of the other characters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what characters in the game and general like things, plot points, uh, are you guys interested in learning more about? Uh, things having to do with spaceport, outside of spaceport, each other. What what interests you the most right now? Yeah, nice try, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see how far Zatchet will go. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, I, th I think he, he might it. get killed by uh, <laughs> by Hugh here pretty soon. Yeah. Even though he was like brought under his wing, I or gummy gonna, arm, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, <laughs> that that poor Zatchet. We got to keep our eye on him. <laughs> There's going to be a, a, a boss battle down the road, or it's just awaken Zatchet. <laughs> we, have, we, have to, we have to fight like level 60 Final Zatchet. Form Zatchet. <laughs> I am extremely curious about Gilroth Rolodex. Yeah. Know, and his, uh, you know, tax evasion. You know, mm. I, I'm, I'm very curious. I'll just put it that way. All righty. Cool. Fantastic. Uh, what are your guys' perspectives on each other's characters and the people who aren't present? Um, I think that. It's not going too far to say that I think Hugh, Shark, and Hemp, the three people who were on the show last, have maybe the three most definitive characters out of all of your guys. You have two super death murderers, like an assassin and a lawyer, and then Hemp, who is like the most backcountry, like I love everybody and I also will shoot magic, like kind of guy. Um, what what a uh, what other what are your perspectives on their characters and like what you guys have going on? I love their characters. I think that they like something about even though their designs are so different and their concepts are so different. Like if you put Hugh and Shark together, like I would just like that's from the same thing. It's like, like they're the Ratatouille from, moment. They're from the same thing. Like <laughs> yeah, they look like they true. just fit together so well, even though they look so different. Um, and the fact that there was very little co like coordination on that is mm -hmm. crazy. And then Aaron's character is just hilarious. But. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the interactions you see on the table are a direct analog to our everyday life here at the work. <laughs> there is no difference. Yeah. There is no role play. It is just a it is just a filter. I'm I'm, I'm like a, like like Matt is very much wanting to get things done efficiently and quickly. He's like, let's move on to the next place, let's move on to the next place. Uh, Valar will sit there. I say a uh, shark, not Matt, but Valar will sit there and then only voice his opinion when something is not up to what he believes to be par or standard, which mm -hmm. is very much what Danny is great for. He will tell you exactly what he thinks when it needs to be said. Mm -hmm. Everything else he will be quiet on. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, Charles will just come out of left field with the most whack shit ever mm -hmm. and just. Mm -hmm. A, you know, for you know, disruption for you know, for fun, or you know, to see how you respond. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, God, Aaron, how do you even describe Aaron? <laughs> Aaron once told me he had children. <laughs> the, for, the first conversation we ever had was we had he had about his kids. He's like, yeah, I don't know if I can move down here because my kids or whatever. And I told Charles, he's like, Aaron doesn't have kids. And then I just learned that Aaron's humor is just lying about shit. <laughs> it's um, a perfect for D and D storyteller. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a, an amazing storyteller. So so when I say it's like a filter, it's like literally just our everyday interaction, but with a uh, fantasy setting, mm -hmm. sci fantasy. And anything on each other's characters sitting in front of you? Any extra perspective that you think of? I think the two of you are going to be extremely helpful. You already have been with like the healing side of things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you definitely need the people that are going to be like the I'm going reckless right now mm -hmm. or whatever. But the healing has saved all of our asses more than once. So that's a really fun, fun part of it, I think. Yeah, I guess you guys right now are like the three healers. Valar has healing, too. Yes. But you guys are like the healers, I would imagine. Yeah. I think I think Bard is such a fun like class to watch people play and to see how they approach it because I feel like it has the most uh, free free expression and like your cloud of daggers being bones and stuff yeah. and being like almost like voodoo mm -hmm. like magic I think is really really interesting mm -hmm. be a shame if Ray died yeah <laughs> we'd, lose a lot, we'd lose a lot of healing wouldn't we <laughs> <laughs> yes he's very needed in campaign yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you all shared a really meaningful moment with each other and Didi when you had your favorite meals. Did you expect anything like that to happen in the underground of Spaceport? Uh, how do you think it's changed your perspective on the party or even like D&D in general? Is this something that you kind of saw coming from watching other D&D like media or were you kind of like flabbergasted by it either in the moment or like thinking back on it? A favorite meal, no. I, I, I was expecting at some point to have some kind of uh, experience where we pull something from our past in some way. Food, no. And I thought that that was very funny that I was like, well, I'll just make a make a food item I can't even eat. And <laughs> yeah. that'll, and that'll be my whole sad story. But yep. um, it, it, it did a good job making all everyone else's characters feel more, I say human, even though they're not human, but, no, but yeah. making them feel real, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think any time that Charlie is even slightly serious is a very uh, interesting time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was... The dirt. Yeah, the dirt. And like, it's also like a really sad story, but he's just saying it with like, you know, you know whatever, that's just my trauma. And it's like, yeah. holy <laughs> fuck, man. Like, yeah. that's really heavy, Let's actually. sit down and talk yeah. about this. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that that's also kind of a good, just like, person thing. Like, being a person, like, thinking about these other sides of different people. It's a good way to gain some empathy. Mm -hmm. When Charles said mud pies, I couldn't help but remember those really shitty frozen pizzas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you remember when it, his, like, was, like, his favorite childhood food is along with meat sticks? Yeah, I and I was like, there's honestly not much difference. <laughs> <laughs> Just dirt in a ring. It's, yeah, like, like, it's like frozen pizza from the Dollar Tree. Yeah. It's like his, oh, wow. one of his favorites. Yeah. yeah and I, I couldn't. I was just, I couldn't separate those two. I was like, that's actually so, like, it's an analog to a real life experience. Yeah. Um, I, I just said the hard tack because it was like bland, consistent, and always there, yeah. Um, which is. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys know what hard tack is? You guys know what hard tack is, right? I've, I've heard well, of it. Well, it was intergalactic, I'm yeah, sorry. Intergalactic. Yeah, intergalactic. Right. Do you want to tell them what hard tack is? And I know Chelsea, you've definitely done like a Civil War reenactment. Don't lie to me. <laughs> it's, only, <laughs> it's only a matter of time. We'll see you on the battlefield. You're on the path. I see it in front of me. I, I was expecting you to be like, last week, actually. <laughs> last <laughs> week. You're not wrong. I do a lot of weird stuff on the weekends, but no, I've not done that yet. <laughs> matter of time. Yeah. Um, it's basically like super dense cracker. It's like just water, salt, and flour made to last hundreds of years. Yeah. Like matzo. <laughs> it's something that sailors would. Yeah, would you make. can say that. I can't. <laughs> and it's so hard. It like breaks. Teeth. It's, it's like it's ridiculous. Like super jerky. It, yeah, but just bread, flour, oh, okay, and water. Okay. Yeah, and it's like Ew. like Lamba's bread. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> it's just hard, hard. It's it's literally like tile. It's like actually yeah. that thick. Okay. You, if you, they would have to boil it in water to to eat it to consume it. Yeah. Um, so but, it was really funny seeing Foray just pick it up and go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just crunch through it. And then I was like, and well, then didn't I, you say you had like a mouthful of fillings? Or yeah, something? yeah, a mouthful of just like silver fillings. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. Gold is too soft naturally. Of yeah, course. Silver. <laughs> but um, no, I just I thought that was a really heartwarming moment and uh, brought everybody together, kind of gave us a little a bit of background. Mm -hmm. And you actually made me really sad that moment, which was yeah. nice. Sorry. But I, you know, made me realize I, I care about, about your character a lot, which yeah. is nice. You gotta give them that perspective. Yeah, Seven's definitely one of my favorite characters, 100%. and that was a very touching moment. I call it an iPod. Stuck in my head for <laughs> a fucking week. <laughs> so good. So good. All right, this is, this is a selfish question. This is from me to you guys. Have you guys been thinking about a party name? Oh. Because it is going to come a time when you will need one just to make things easy. So it's not, I'm Shark, I'm Valar, I'm Foray, every single time. I know that whatever I'm thinking of will not be as funny as what either uh, Charles or, uh, Aunt, or Aaron says, so mm -hmm. I'm just not going to bother. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron will say something like, the the poopy boys, and everyone will lose Next it. Next thing we know, yeah, we're the defecation squad. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Well, don't don't make the call too soon. Oh, God. Uh, something, something like multiversal in the name, mm. I'm thinking. like Since we're all from different, mm -hmm. different areas, different realms... Um, Nothing's coming to mind right now, though. I got. I got to let it cook. Well, I'm not saying that you need one right now. Okay. I'm asking. I was like, mine was shit. I'm asking. <laughs> are you thinking you. about it? Like, is this something in your mind? Now I that am. You're thinking of? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, good. Um, just from dungeon master to players, very good idea to think about that. <laughs> Although I like the idea of just like someone else is gonna figure it out. It's gonna yeah. be way better than what I can I'm do. Just, yeah, you're just gonna sit on the sidelines for that one. Yeah, have perfect. fun. You gotta. You gotta know your place in the party. Yeah, 100%. you're not the. You're not the party namer. Um. <laughs> Okay, that wasn't really a question. It was more like homework. <laughs> um, uh, what do you guys anticipate from the Goblin Space Cannon that you guys are walking to? 
and uh, also getting closer and closer to the close of Spaceport and then the start into whatever the next arc is going to be. Um, goblin Space Cannon meeting somebody that was a goblin learned how to use it because we already discovered it was like some sort of like I'm going to use Halo like Forerunner technology in a sense. Yeah, know? pretty much. You know, and I assume what we're going to find is that you know there, there's some smart goblin that's not supposed to be smart and I'm really curious to, to see how they got that smart. The mm -hmm. smart lady, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to see if there's like some sort of uh, not I guess you could call it crossbreeding. I hate to say that about goblins, because they are <laughs> <laughs> a hominid, technically. Um, yeah, I mean, in my home game, goblins are basically rodents who can talk. So, oh, that you makes know, you're not spreading so any... better about what I said. <laughs> yeah, no, don't feel bad. I'm the worst when it comes to goblins. <laughs> um, do you guys have any ideas of what you think you're going to run into? I don't, I don't know if there would be, like, another encounter before we go up in the canon but i don't even know like what that would entail if that if the travel itself yeah. in space will be its own encounter Thing. or event or if it's just like instantaneous and we're just there um i don't know it's it's more exciting to not <laughs> to, to just <laughs> to not think about it yeah to be like whatever whatever comes comes you know mm -hmm. after yeah, finding yeah. out that zatchet was addicted to murdering um <laughs> yep. it has made me very nervous mm -hmm. to go find the smart goblin. So I think mm. that I think something might be afoot. You're gonna be playing some defense, is what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> I, I like it. I, I like the planning, at least. What I like about goblins is they, is they wear their interests on their sleeves most of the time. Like you can tell exactly what they're into immediately. Yes, sir. And um, it was a very interesting to see Zatchet, you know, actually just be this murderous, evil, maniacal person mm -hmm. um, who had hidden that, which was also very interesting i was like maybe there's a certain level of intelligence in, uh, intelligence in these goblins that i have not seen with previous goblins mm -hmm. and then what about the potential close to spaceport happening within the next couple of weeks what are you guys thinking about that and upcoming arcs do you have any you're gonna feelings? blow it up or some shit <laughs> <laughs> but gonna, do you have any feelings about like changing between the two settings or yeah you're gonna blow it up that's how we're <laughs> we're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it, and then some something out of nowhere is just gonna blow it up like like it's gone. Like what was mm -hmm. it? Uh, what was that one planet uh, in, in Star Wars? Uh, Tatooine. Tatooine. Ta yeah, Tatooine just boom, gone. Just getting popped. Popped right off. No, definitely not. No, no. What it was, was, it was uh, Leia's Endor. planet. Yeah, Endor? yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I don't remember. think it was. It doesn't matter. But oh, yeah, fucking right, right. dude. It's I know. I'm gonna. Me. <laughs> Little. What are, what are the Ewoks? I thought you guys were not nerds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Editor little bear people. It, it'll embarrass all of us. Yeah, the, e yeah, the Ewoks. Er Ewok, Ewoks eradicated almost. Yeah, that's how I feel about Spaceport. It's like, we're just going to leave and it's just going to, like, we're going to look you back. See it, ding, in the distance. <laughs> and then we'll be like, we did something really terrible somehow. <laughs> we didn't we? <laughs> I'm excited for it. Yeah. I think it'll be, I think it'll be cool. It'll be interesting to go from having the mindset of being in one specific uh, world and then having to completely change your approach. Like recontextualize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that. We kind of knew beginning that we were going to be doing these different arcs throughout the campaign, so um, I'm excited for it. But yeah, Spaceport's been awesome. I think that you guys have done such an incredible job creating that world and, and all the scenes that have been played out in it. So um, Something that hasn't really been said formally, or I guess out to the internet, is how we're kind of running things, where Ryan is running an arc, and then after his is done, we're going to be taking some off time, uh, not from the schedule, but we're playing sort of in between anime filler episode games, either uh, at the museum or in moments that we're going to sort of rewind back to from the previous arc. And then I'm going to step in and run this next arc. Uh, and then that cycle will continue until, I don't know, I guess we die. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> um, I was I was trolling with the blowing up thing. I just want to let you know, uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how we have our like, Mario 64 Peach's Castle, like where we have, you know, mm -hmm. we're coming out of one painting, like Bob Ahmed Battlefield, basically a spaceport. Now we're gonna yeah. go to the next one. I'm interested to see how that painting is going to look, and I'm excited to see your arc. Also, I, I would like to let you know. Um, that. I'm so ready to bring it to you guys. It's so funny. There's so many things that I talked about with the team, like ideas for campaigns, and I was like, maybe I'll just turn them into arcs. And then I think we saw, me and Ryan saw something, or we were just talking, and we said a two-word idea. Yeah, it was, it was a joke, a literal two-word joke that he had said to me, and I was like, I'm doing it. I have to make that into an entire world and story that they have to play through. There's no getting around it. So I'm really excited for it. Um, how do you guys all feel about Matthew's dice addiction? Uh, yeah, he's he's kind of gone off the deep end there, A huh? little bit. Has he? I've seen his like ring, and he's got like dice around the ring. I, Is for it? one, am proud. 
<laughs> I didn't. Is it how how many dice? He has he a have? lot. I think now. He has He's... like four or five dice sets at this point. I did order a couple of sets, but they got lost thanks a lot Amazon. Um, so I got to reorder <laughs> them, but. That's Amazon he's, a he's sponsor on another of level. This episode. I think that that's probably one of the things too that we're all going to have to watch out for is that I think we all have a little bit of addictive personalities when it comes to those little trinkety things. Yeah. <laughs> so dice dice are cool, man. Yeah, I I super do. My dice box at home is chock full, and I'm glad that more people are joining me. That's actually I don't know. Maybe let us know in the comments if you want to see our dice sets that we play with. We could maybe post those on Twitter or something. Or send them to us. Oh. Send us more. I was not surprised in the slightest. Um, <laughs> there was one day that Matt pulled out a Microtech uh, OTF knife, and I just knew. At that, moment, <laughs> at that moment, I knew my wolf pack had grown by two, or by one. Um, I just was like, that. he knows it. He know, he's just like, and then we started talking about various fidgety things that we have. It's like, knife collections, this, woodwork. I was like, that's my boy. It's over. <laughs> yeah. And then I look over, and I see like three new dice sets. I'm like, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I gave Matt a fidget cube, like... Mm -hmm. a month or two ago and i have not seen it since i <laughs> think i like just handed it to him i was like oh hey look at this because you mentioned wanting one mm -hmm. and it's gone it's gone it's gone now Vanished. it's his it's his now fantastic but, yep. rightfully so yes yes the universe deems it so yeah <laughs> uh final question for you guys before we get to it it's been a pleasure an absolute pleasure talking oh, to you, you guys too, and, and picking your brains about the campaign that uh me and ryan are so painstakingly crafting for you all and the last question, which I kind of asked, asked as a joke at the end of the last one that I'm going to post to you guys as well, is I want you guys to just make a wild prediction about the end of the campaign that I'm just going to hold you to until we get there. Just an absolutely insane, unthinkable prediction that you might have. My wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Borat is the Borat is the final boss. Borat is final boss. Of <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, write that down. Write <laughs> <laughs> that down. Right right Borat, Borat <laughs> being there would be funny because we were talking about the intricacies of Borat in, the, in that, but also mm -hmm. literally my wife. Somebody had mentioned something about my wife being you know, a bronze dragon and all that, um, which is fair because we don't know exactly how I got married, um, which is fun little all thing these to details. think about. Yeah. I think that this is a shot in the dark too, but I think c considering the context that we were all taken from our worlds to go to the museum, I think that we're going to have like a like a reunion tour like where we're going to each person's story and like closing out their little like in their home worlds yeah like closing out their stories before they were taken and then mm -hmm. i guess going our separate ways or maybe one of the celestial gods that because danny's character is foreshadowed to be mm -hmm. important he's something yeah he's he's hey he's there and the he's seventh. there he's not supposed to be but he's yeah, there. the seventh um but something something with that i think Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's it'll be it'll be cool regardless. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think mine would be the exact opposite. I think you're gonna blow up all of our planets. <laughs> <laughs> They're all just gonna be dust when you return to them. I think you're gonna force us to be a ragtag group of just forever. murderers for forever. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be so sad because I described my planet as like a little Master Roshi house, like yep, a little island, just and it's just like gone. Literally ninety percent water with a little baby like island, and a little house on there is eradicated. Yeah, sad. Just deleted. Well. Thank you guys so much for joining me on episode two of Vibe Check. And I guess we'll see everybody again on Wednesday for the next session. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you very much Thank for watching us. <laughs>